Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about dealing with late data in streaming systems. There are two different concepts of time in streaming system. One is called the event time and the other is the processing time. For event time, this is the time at which the events actually occurred. So if you take a look at this one event, you can see the field order timestamp. This is the actual timestamp of when the order actually happened. So that's going to be called the event time. The processing time, however, is very different. This is the time at which the events are observed in your system. The timestamp is assigned when the event is being processed. That means, let's say there is an order that took place right now, but for whatever reason, the system actually received the event five minutes from now. So the event time is still going to be the current time. However, the processing time is going to be five minutes from now because that is when the system is actually ingesting or processing the event. So there can be various reasons these two times are different. One can be delayed data. So let's say the event happened right now, but there was some network issue because of which the processing time is different. It can be out of order data. That means let's say you have a burst of a few thousand events that just occurred, but when your system is receiving the events, they are it is receiving them at a different order, right? If the order is different, of course, the processing time assigned is also going to be different. And the last thing is backfilling data. So let's say you have the real time system built and events are coming in. Now, for whatever reason, you want to backfill data from five, six years ago. So, of course, the event time of those data, it's going to be from five, six years ago. However, if you're putting them back into the system, the processing time is going to be different because they're being processed right now. So you can see there can be many different reasons. Your event time and processing times are very different. So why aren't they equal? In an ideal world, they would be equal. Events would be processed the moment they occur. Right? That is the ideal world where the moment something happens, your system gets that event immediately and processes it, processes it immediately too. Right? But in, uh, in the practical world, it can be very different. So you have to des design systems based on the assumption that your event time and processing time can be different. So there are a lot of external factors like th that we talked about. Uh, one is internet issues, especially for mobile events, because let's say you are emitting data from your mobile phone through a data plan and you go to some place in the world where you don't have internet. Now, now, the events are actually happening in real time. However, your system, so your streaming system, it's going to get the events later on when your phone has internet connection. So the processing time that the system is going to assign to these events it's going to be very different from the event time of when the events actually happened. You can also have a slow processing engine. So let's say there is no delay. The moment an event is happening, it is going into the system. But the events can be happening so fast that the system cannot keep up. So it would essentially buffer the data as it is processing event one by one. In slow processing engines like this, you can have a different processing time because even though the the events are entering the system on time. It's not being processed until a few minutes from now. And then you have backfilling all data, which we already talked about. Okay, so now the question is, you have these two different times, event and processing time. What do you actually use when you're doing different computations in your streaming job? So it totally depends on your use case. It uh, boils down to this one question, which is that how much do you care about the actual event time? So in your application, how much do you care about when an event actually happened? You might care about it a lot, right? So let's say you can have something like billing events where timing really matters of when the billing actually took place. Or you can have user interactions, right? You want to see in your application at which times during the day, how, do, how does certain groups of users interact with your application? Or it can be historical data too, right? Or maybe you don't care about the actual time, right? So it, examples might include analytics data. 
you don't really care about when or how certain metrics are coming into your system. All you care about is the metrics actually coming into your system. Or you can have something like CPU usage where uh, maybe the event time and processing time does not have to be exactly equal. You're, you just care about different spikes in CPU usage uh, rather than actually being super accurate for both the event time and the processing time. Okay, so now that we have established that you can have late data coming into your system, let's talk about what can you actually do with this late data. So the most common solution is of course to just ignore it or discard it. So whenever your system gets the data uh, from like some historical time, it will just ignore the data, right? Or you just discard it. So that's the most common thing to do. However, there is a problem with that. And the problem comes when you have any kind of windowing operation. Let's go through a few examples. Let's say you're looking to some, uh, so in your streaming engine, you wrote a program that sums up all events in the last 60 minutes, right? So every event that took place in the last 60 minutes, you want to sum it up. Similarly, let's say you have another program where you want to find the average of all the scores in the last 30 minutes. So how do you know that you have seen the last event of that window, right? So for this example, let's say you are summing all the events in the last 60 minutes. So you start counting from minute one, two, three, four, and then you reach minute 60. No? Uh, so now you know that in the last 60 minutes, you have, let's say, 200 events. However, how do you know that the events that you observed, those are all the events for the last 60 minutes? Because if you have late data coming into your, into your system, it can easily mean after the 60 minutes have passed, you still have data coming into your system from that 60 minute window. Same thing for the average. Let's say from minute one to minute 30, you keep counting the average. And now on minute 30, you are ready to give the result out. But at minute 30, how do you know that you have observed all the events from the last 30 minutes? Because of late data and what we talked about, it can easily happen that in the 35th minute, you have a data that just comes in from the previous window. So yeah, the main question we're trying to answer here is how do you know you have seen the last event from a given window? That's where the concept of watermarks come in. So watermark with watermarks, what you do is you define when to stop waiting for earlier events. So there is no magic solution you actually have to configure your job and tell it when it can stop waiting for late events. So just by definition, watermark is a threshold to specify how long the system waits for late events. If an arriving event lies within the watermark, it gets used. If it's older than the watermark, it will be dropped, right? And this is like a pseudocode of an example you can see here. Essentially what happens is, let's say you have a watermark of five minutes. Now, when an event comes in, you're gonna add five minutes to it, and that's gonna tell you if the event has happened in the window or not, right? So with watermark, you can essentially buffer results. So let's say if you're looking, if your window is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., uh, and in this window, what you're doing is summing every, all the events up that happened between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Now at 2 p.m., uh, of course, you know that all the events should have arrived by now. So your option one is to just finish counting and then produce that sum as an output. However, now if an uh, event comes in at 2.02 p.m. or 2.03 p.m., those are not going to be accounted for in the sum because you did not wait longer. Now, let's say you have the same system, but you have a watermark of five minutes. What you're essentially telling the system now is instead of spitting out the result at 2 p.m., wait five more minutes. So wait until 2.05, giving all your events five minute buffer time to arrive into the system. Once that five minutes have expired, you spit out the result, which is going to be the sum. Now, if any events of the 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. window comes to your system after 2.05 p.m., you just discard it because your watermark has expired or 
the event has passed that watermark that you defined. So it becomes very important to define the watermark uh, amount or function uh, carefully. Totally depends on your system. There is no magic number that you can use. You can either configure your watermarking very aggressively with a very short bounded delay. That means you take the risk of producing results with incomplete knowledge of the input. Going back to the example, if your, uh, if your watermark is one minute and your window is 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., you are ignoring all the events that takes place after 2.01 p.m. So you just wait one extra minute. The other option is you wait longer and produce results that take advantage of having more complete knowledge of the input stream. What this means is let's say you have a watermark of 30 minutes and your window is 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Now, if an, if an event arrives between 2 p.m. and 2.30 p.m., you are still counting that event and then at 2.30 p.m., you are outputting the result of events between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. So you're giving that 30 minute delay to wait to see if there's more uh, late data that's coming into your system. The positive of doing this is of course, you are, mi you are missing less events because you're more likely to catch late data if your window is longer. On the, on the downside, What's happening is instead of emitting the result immediately, so instead of just outputting the result at 2 p.m., you're waiting an extra 30 minutes, which of course means that your pipeline is gonna be less real time. So watermark is a value you have to play around with. Uh, it totally depends on your application. There is no magic number you can use, but depending on the use case, it does give you some flexibility to tune your system so that uh, it fits your use case better. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to cover related to late data in streaming engines. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'm going to try to get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day, and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.